If your harebrained nephew unwittingly summoned a sadistic demonic force bent on possessing and or wiping out your entire family, what would you do? As if watching our loved ones devolve into playthings for a malicious unknown entity wasn't bad enough, a massive earthquake has trapped us in a rundown old apartment building. And with all the cell towers down as well, don't expect John Constantine to swoop in at the last minute and solve our problems for us. Fact is, if we want any chance at making it out alive, we're gonna have to find a way to make these freak shows horizontal. But as we're about to find out, they don't stay that way for very long. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the deadites in Evil Dead Rise. Beth just found out the hard way life happens fast. Now that she has one in the chamber, she decides to hang up her career as a rock and roll roadie and barge into the chaotic existence of her older sister, who she pretty much ignored during her own bout of catastrophic family struggles just a few months prior. Oh, but don't worry, Ellie quickly sends her tax write-offs out for pizza so she can share all the juicy details of her recent transition to single parenthood. And just in time for them to see the big one hit. <laughs> Earthquake! Man, this was a short one. Oh well. And with that, all our heroes were crushed under innumerable tons of steel and concrete. Moral of the story, don't die. I'm joking, of course. Obviously, the building pulls through. Although that's pretty surprising given its age and general crappiness. Even more surprising is how Bridget, Danny, and Cass knew to curl up by one of the pillars. Either beside one of those or a wall is where you'll have the best chance of survival during an earthquake. It seems someone taught them well. Unfortunately, Danny must have missed the part about not immediately climbing down into a freshly opened fissure mere seconds after the shaking stops. As Bridget correctly points out, this is exactly how an aftershock subtracts you from the gene pool. Not to mention the fact it could be on the verge of caving in or filling with gas from a broken line. Nah, it's totally fine. After all, moron sees an old bank vault down there. Honestly, I say go for it, dude. Your mom clearly isn't flush with cash right now, and you could definitely save her a boatload by vanishing off the face of the earth. However, much to the detriment of local test scores, not only does Danny avoid being swallowed alive by the forces of Darwinism, he ends up walking away with some dusty old tome they can pawn for beer money. Yep, just an ordinary book with teeth that appears to be bound in human skin. You need to put it back right now. Mom's not letting any of us out the front door again tonight. First thing in the morning then. Nope, we're throwing it out the window. Did you not see all the twisted adorning every single page. Absolutely nothing good could come from holding on to this thing for any amount of time. Oh, but nerd, you say? Demons and curses are just fairy tales made up to sell Ouija boards and incense candles. Surely no one would believe such a thing could ever be dangerous. Nerds. Nerd Explains, aka me, is now on Patreon. Why? Because YouTube. You may have noticed the insane level of censorship on my videos lately. YouTube's onslaught against anything not G-rated means I can't show you all the violence, gore, blood, foul language, and nudity you depraved brave. Well, not on YouTube, but I can on Patreon. Not only that, but I cut out all ads, all sponsors, and you'll get early access to the video for $3 per month. Just $2 more than that, and you'll get one bonus Patreon exclusive how to beat video per week. At $20 more than that, people will remember your name. Well, probably not remember. More like see your name for a few seconds. It's totally worth it though. If it makes you feel better, I'm I will remember your name. Those are the tiers I'm starting with. If you have ideas for cool things I can offer to you patrons, by all means, let me know in the comments. And if it doesn't suck, I'll consider it. Link to my Patreon is in the description. Now back to the video. Well, let's start with what we know for a fact. The creepy old book's cover drank up some of Danny's cherryade before magically unlocking itself and revealing the horrors within. No thank you. Out the window. Yes, someone else will probably find it and 
and unleash the evil spirits themselves. But it could just as easily be found back in the bank vault after work crews come in to survey the damage. At least this way, we'd be getting rid of it before one of us inadvertently signs our own death warrants. The good news is that it's 2023, and no one under the age of 25 has ever actually read a physical book before. So, at least we won't have to worry about someone reciting any potential magic words without realizing, well, about that. It seems the previous owners of this abomination had the foresight to include an audio version in case future readers regress to the attention span of a fruit fly. And as we all know, vinyl's been making a comeback. <laughs> Rise from the dead in the name of Satan. <laughs> Yet another reason you don't take the elevator after an earthquake. I'm pretty sure Laundry can wait, and she literally just ripped her brood a collective new one for doing the exact same thing not five minutes ago. I get she couldn't have known a demon from hell was about to string her up like howdy doody, but she should have at least been aware that an aftershock could occur at any moment. If that happened while she was in motion, more likely than not, the e-brakes would have tripped and left her stranded until help arrived, which, without cell service, could have taken hours, if not all night. Meanwhile, her dependents would be left in the custody of her road rat younger sister learning alternative uses for metal spoons. Of course, what they're left to deal with now will probably make them wish she had gotten stuck on the elevator, because eventually, Mommy Dearest staggers back to the apartment, and <laughs> oh boy, has she worked up an appetite. I had the most beautiful drink. It was the perfect day, and all I could think about was how much I wanted to cut you all open and climb inside your body so that we could stay one happy family. There's a Mother's Day card for you. Yeah, this is not good. Ellie looks like someone her up with a coffee pot, and between her slurred speech and the fact that she puked up about a million gallons of whole milk afterwards, I'd say she needs a hospital like yesterday. But because the elevator's shot and the stairs are out of order, all we can do is keep an eye on her until someone can bring back help. Sure, she might seem deader than Elvis right now, but people have come back from pretty shocking displays of lifelessness in the past, so we shouldn't give up on her just yet. And for that matter, why is no one performing CPR? You! Come here! Breathe into his mouth! <clears throat> Between Danny, Beth, Bridget, and all the neighbors, we could keep a rotation going for hours on end. Come on, Beth, you're the adult here. Besides, with your line of work, no way this is the first time you've seen someone unresponsive after heaving their guts out. As for how we go about reaching help, we're not nearly as hosed as one might think. That is provided one of us is willing to risk it for the biscuit. And by that, I mean Danny. Seriously, dude, your mom started pulling an exorcist within minutes of you playing that creep recording. This is very obviously all your fault. So now you get to be a part of the solution. First things first, we need to fashion a rope out of the bed sheets so numb nuts can reach the ground in one piece. Sure, it might sound a little crazy given we're on the 14th floor and all, but three years ago, a couple inmates escaped the Oklahoma County Jail by rappelling down 12 stories with one of these bad boys. So it's well within the realm of possibility. Plus, we don't actually have to make it all the way to street level. Looking down the stairwell, there's only a handful of flights missing before it picks up again. So realistically, we're only talking about 50 or 60 feet. As for the rope itself, that's the easy part. A single king-sized sheet makes about 12 feet of rope. So if the entire floor pools together, we should have more than enough to make it down. After all, I'm sure everyone will be willing to sacrifice some linens if it means getting out of here. We'll want to attach each sheet together at the corners using square knots and then fasten it to something sturdy, like a radiator or support beam. We could even have everyone hold on to it if there's no better option. Once we, sorry, once Danny climbs on, he'll want to loop the rope around his foot using the S-wrap technique to slow his descent. And from there, it's just a matter of gently sliding down at a controlled pace until he reaches solid ground. Of course, if we wanted to make this even easier, we could use old man Fonda's boomstick to blast our way into 
into the abandoned apartment and access the fire escape. You know, like he suggested. Oh, except apparently we can't because, and I quote, everyone is on edge enough without guns getting fired in here. Yeah, speak for yourself, nitwit. Your neighbor just dropped dead for no reason, and everyone else is trapped up here waiting for an aftershock to finish what the city should have done to this place years ago. I think they'll understand if we tell them we're going to pop off a couple shotgun shells to ourselves. Besides, it's not like everyone will immediately start eating each other's faces off over a random gunshot. This is Los Angeles, for Christ's sake. Ultimately, whatever we decide to do, we'd better do it quick. Because it turns out, Ellie hasn't checked out yet. But as everyone's about to find out, this is not quite the miracle they were hoping for. <laughs> Nope, that's it. We're throwing her out the window. And in about 30 seconds, we're really gonna wish we had. Because Ellie's about to rip through her family like crap through a goose. Although, it's not like anyone did a damn thing to try and stop her. I mean, sure, it'd probably be difficult to crack your own mother over the head with a frying pan, even if she suddenly turned into a white-eyed freak. But once you watch her jab your aunt through the hand with a shard of broken glass and tattoo your sister with her own blood, you might want to smack her with something a little more robust than a wooden chair like the microwave, or my personal favorite, the toilet tank lid. Either way, we need to follow up with more blows, like a lot more, and that means getting everyone in on the action. I mean, it's only right she go out surrounded by her family, you know, as they all frantically bludgeon her to death with various household appliances. Lucky for us, neighbor Gabe shows up just in time to draw the aggro. <laughs> Gone. Perfect. Now, time to barricade the front door with pretty much everything inside the apartment and start working on that bedsheet rope. I'm thinking between all four of their beds, plus extras, throws, and guest sheets, we probably still have enough to make it all the way down. But even if we can only get within 20 feet, well, Danny can still crawl for help on broken legs. As for our friends in the hall, Jesus Christ, I'm not even sure I can show what's going down out there. Suffice it to say, if you're seeing a bunch of frolicking teacup pigs right now, then this proved way too hot for YouTube. In that case, I'll keep this brief. So, basically, it's... It's like, uh, have you ever seen someone get their eyeball bitten out by an undead witch, only to then have that same eyeball be launched like a missile down the throat of the victim's son, thereby choking him to death? It's, it's pretty much just like that. All I can say is, it's a good thing no one fired any gunshots just now. Otherwise, someone might have had their fifis hurt. <laughs> Oh, nope, never mind. Poor old fool. Everyone knows you can't kill a demon with a shotgun. You need to bear it. All the same, why would you close the distance after dumping that... Just take a look around. It's like Art the Clown came through here. Do you really think a normal person could go around ripping people's arms off? The only thing you're going to accomplish by moving up like that is putting her inside your reactionary gap. Which is why Mr. Fonda caught a gruesome death off screen like an absolute chump. Well, whatever. All that matters right now is that Ellie's out there and we're in here. So we need to take the time to shore up our defenses and improvise as many weapons as possible. Unfortunately, the best we can probably hope for around here are a few kitchen knives taped to broom handles. And given she shrugged off a center mass spread of buckshot like it was nothing, I highly doubt those would get us very far. In that case, our number one priority right now is to GTFO, which nobody seems to be thinking about for some reason. Yes, I suppose it's possible cell phone service might return at any second, but there's no way to know for sure, and even if it does, who knows how many other disasters are currently in need of police attention. Once again, I think the bedsheet rope is the move here. None of us are too grievously injured to make it impossible, and we can have Cass climb onto someone's back and go down first. We should also be sure to barricade ourselves inside one of the interior rooms before anchoring the rope, so Ellie can't simply break in through the front door and cut us loose while we're halfway there. Of course, this is all assuming someone doesn't get us all killed by doing something extremely stupid, like opening the door for someone who looks like this. You don't look so good, Mom. Oh. 
Nothing a big ol' hug and kiss from you won't fix. Mmm, somehow I doubt it. Actually, you know what? She's convinced me. Go ahead and let her in, Cass. This was probably just one of those 20-minute possessions you read about online. <laughs> Nope, I guess not. Imagine seeing your mom viciously attack your aunt and sister before fatally mauling four more people just outside the door, and then letting her back inside while she's still covered in their blood. Okay, sure, Cass is just a wee one and all, but like, at least ask another adult if she can come back in first. The good news is that this extremely painful experience will hopefully serve to educate her going forward. That being said, I still think we should chain her up to a big rock for the remainder of our time here, just in case the lesson didn't take. Jokes aside, this encounter does give us some valuable insight into this spirit driving Ellie like a meat mech right now. It clearly has access to her memories, as evidenced by it bringing up Cass's father to try and talk her way inside. This means it also probably knows about any vulnerabilities in our defenses, such as thin walls in the neighboring apartments she could rip through, or even how to access the ventilation ducts. Wink wink. All this is to say, it's only a matter of time before she gets inside, and considering what happened last time, we really don't want to be in here when that eventually happens. Oh, and just to make things worse, Bridget isn't looking much better than her mom right now. Evidently, that Davos group diet isn't agreeing with her, not to mention the fact that she's leaking some serious chocolate sauce right now. Yeah, maybe just, uh, just tip your head back, you know, pinch your nose. Nah, what am I saying? A chick's a total goner, and Sure enough, by the time Beth gets to her, she's perched up on the counter working her My Strange Addiction B-roll. I gotta kill the creepy crawlies that I got inside my tongue. Seems reasonable. Maybe wash it down with a little antifreeze afterwards. Cleanse the palate. Yeah, now's the part where Beth needs to call in Danny for the double team before she lets Ellie back in for a two-on-two. -two. I mean, I know Team Humanity doesn't exactly have the best track record against these things so far, but it's either that or they kill us all. So we're doing it, period. Knowing this, I gotta wonder why Danny would respond to the blood-curdling screams of his aunt getting cheese gratered without a weapon in his hands. Dude, what on earth did you think it could possibly be? At least grab a desk lamp or something so you're not forced to immediately turn tail and run at the first sign of trouble. Luckily, there's at least one person in this family who recognizes a call to arms when she hears one. <laughs> All right. Stephanie coming in clutch. Plus, now we know we can actually put them down with normal physical means. I guess it figures they'd be powerless without their brains. Hmm, on second thought, we probably shouldn't counter out just yet. With everything we've seen out of Ellie so far, this could just be a ruse meant to catch us off guard. In that case, I think we all know what we need to do with her. I thought I should tie her up. What? No, you dumb Throw her out the gut window. Obviously, she's just going to break free when you least expect it and totally jack you up. At least if she somehow manages to peel herself off the sidewalk Looney Tune style, it'll probably take her a while to make it back up here. Plus, while their wounds don't seem to phase them that much, they don't appear to be healing back up either. And I can't imagine a totally pulverized skeleton will do wonders for Bridget's hand-to-hand -hand skills. And besides, if you're holding out hope that she can be changed back, I'd go ahead and toss that out the window right after her. Safe to say that even if whatever this is could be reversed, she probably would wouldn't be too happy with a massive gaping hole through her head. Of course, this brings up the fact that we still have no idea what's going on, so it's not necessarily the worst idea in the world to try and figure out what we're up against while we have some time to do so. To that end, Danny finally spills the beans to Auntie Beth about the book he found under the garage. Still, I can't decide whether I'd fire up the last of those vinyls or not. I mean, I guess it stands to reason that if the old priest was able to record and label them, he might have made Made it out alive. But on the other hand, he just as easily could have made album number three after joining the dark side. And the last thing we need right now is Cthulhu rolling in to finish the job. Barring any knowledge of what happens next, let me know what you do down in the comments. As for Beth, she decides to roll the dice and take a listen. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? 
Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Dude on the recording basically says he can't find a way to put down his possessed colleagues no matter how much he hacks them apart. Although, I don't know about you, but I'd much rather be dealing with them in little bits than all in one piece. I mean, they still have some degree of physical limitations, and if we could chop Bridget and Ellie into 20 pieces each and bury each individual chunk inside its own ammo can, I don't see how they could continue to be a problem. I don't know, maybe there's something I'm missing here. One thing's for sure, the moment Beth heard the part about them being unkillable, she should have hauled back to Danny and Cass before something easily predictable happens. Otherwise, what? She's just gonna stand there shutting out the entire world while her nephew gets filleted two rooms over? <laughs> And there goes the marinade. Yum. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll probably notice a lot of black and white from here on out. All I can say is that any fluid you see on screen going forward is, in fact, delicious Hershey syrup and nothing else. Fortunately for Danny, the many years of polluting his body with Axe body spray prepared him for this very moment. Although, it seems the damage is already done. Regardless, this all probably could have been avoided had Cass and Danny hung out next to Beth while she went over the record. What possible reason could you have for splitting up at that time? You already knew just how hard it is to face them on your own, so why not stick together in case something goes horribly wrong, like it literally just did? Besides, if I'm Beth, I'd definitely want someone around to warn me in case my demon-possessed older sister slithers down from the ceiling to totally f*** my day up. Really? You're not even gonna try to stick it in her noggin? You know, the only place on their bodies where your attacks have had any effect so far? No wonder Ellie looked so disappointed back there. Oh well, we all know she's not gonna finish her off right away. No, like any good demon, she needs to take a few seconds to act all spooky while her victim searches for something to stick her with. And this time around, Beth knows just where to aim. Scissors cuts paper. Nah, that, that doesn't work at all. Well, whatever. This is far from over anyway. At best, we've bought ourselves a minute or two to grab Cass and make her escape. Which is why we should waste exactly zero seconds answering her wholly inappropriate questions about her family planning ambitions. Especially since we don't actually have an exit to take right now. What we do have, however, is Mr. Fonda's old side-by-side. -side, which I would immediately turn on that door to the fire escape like we should have done about an hour ago. Provided there aren't any other high value targets around, that is. Bethy Boo! <laughs> Nice flinch, Deadeye. Although it seems to have gotten the job done. In that case, how about instead of wasting a shotgun shell delivering another blow, she'll almost certainly survive? Why don't we blast open the door and make a run for it? After all, even if we manage to put Ellie down for good, we still have Bridget and possibly even Danny to worry about. And speak of the devils, here they come now. I gotta say, I think Beth's decision to get in the elevator here is totally bad. I mean, sure, it clearly has power, but in no way does it seem to be in working order. And even if it was, you gotta believe the freaks are just gonna jump on top and torture us the entire way down. That said, once Cass removes the car keys jamming up the doors, there's no going back. So, we better pray to everything out there this crate starts moving before they finish forming Voltron. Otherwise, we've come all this way just to wind up a box lunch. And it looks like our prayers might have been answered. Although, Definitely not in the way I'd hoped. Still, all that Hershey syrup pooling up around us must weigh a ton. And it just so happens this car is only rated for 900 pounds. Yeah, no f way anyone's living through that, chocolate or no. But of course, if a couple squishy mortals can walk away from that mess unscathed, you can be sure the spirit spider's still right on their heels. However, it seems our little miracle streak doesn't end there. Not only do we have a head start on the creepy crawly, we also have a fully functional Buick we can use to leave it in the dust. And we don't even have to crank on it 50 times to get it started. That means all we have to do now is calmly drive up to the gate, open said gate, and then leave this mess for the Doom Slayer. And yet, for some unknown reason, Beth decides to stop some 30 yards from freedom as 
as though she needs a running start to drive across perfectly level ground. And wouldn't you know it, she parked the drive tires directly on top of the giant crack that started it all. Awesome. Now, because we're so far away, we have to make a mad dash from the creature just to have a chance at rolling under the wire at the last possible second. And guess who comes up short? <laughs> Oof. Well, tough luck, Squirt. I mean, they just dragged her off towards a wood chipper. No way she's coming back from that. Besides, now she's with her family again. See, look how happy Ellie is, holding that chainsaw. Ugh, all right, fine. We'll go back and get her, but we're gonna have to do it quick. In that case, we should move straight to the side of the tree truck where Cass is and swat the blades away with the shotgun barrels. Afterwards, we dump our last two shells into the limbs holding the saw and yank the girl away as we run like... That is pretty much the only way I could see this actually working. And even then, it still sounds completely insane. So now, let's see what Beth comes up with. Come get some. Well, she got some. Okay, let's review all the reasons that was dumb. First of all, you're firing with your niece directly downrange and silhouetted against the truck like that. You have no idea what you're even aiming at. What you do know is that you'll be shooting Ellie in the back, which is likely to push her forward, thereby driving the whirling blades of death directly into Cassie's face. Oh, and let's not forget the way you perched yourself. Needlessly, I might add, on a narrow, uneven surface, meaning you couldn't simply sidestep the saw throw and go for a follow-up shot. No. No, you had to fall over backwards and crank off your last remaining shotgun shell into the ceiling. Now, as a direct result of this profound stupidity, we're being fed feet first into a roaring wood chipper. And this is exactly where our story would end were it not for the fact Big Bad seemingly forgot Cassie ever existed in the first place. Of course, I can't dump all over Beth's massive mistakes without bringing up some of Ellie's. And that list begins and ends with one very important thing. You gave her a f chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, let's see those pieces come back to get us. And with that, Beth and Cassie are finally free to leave this heap of a high rise once and for all. And hopefully also LA. But we'll take what we can get. Oh, and I guess Beth has a sort of last word with her not sister before the finishing move. But it's getting pretty gratuitous at this point, so I'll cut it off there. Seriously, if you want to know what she says, go watch it yourself. It actually wasn't half bad. In the end, only Beth and Cassie made it out alive. However, had we recognized the severity of the situation right away and let Mr. Fonda clear a path to the fire escape, most, if not all of the neighbors, could have made it out before things got crazy. As for Team Beth, Ellie was hosed the moment her son spun up that record, and by extension, so was Bridget. But we could have still gotten Danny out by sticking together and focusing on an exit strategy. Not that he actually deserved it, though. Anyway, for those reasons, reasons, I think the Evil Dead Rise was beaten. Moral of the story, when life hands you problems, throw them out the nearest window and let someone else deal with them.